an incredible story that goes along with these renovations and an incredible cast of characters who made them happen. This documentary is designed to introduce you to the people who made this project successful, to document their generosity, their struggles, and the story behind their accomplishments. My name is Leah Kaiser and I'm a local painter and from 2018 to 2020 I was the president of the Casa Grande Art Association. The Casa I had had some experience raising funds through crowdsourcing with Kickstarter and so I thought maybe we could do something like that with the art museum. I felt like the fence could be a really good opportunity to gather some excitement. I was running our local drawing group. Um, it was actually a pretty great group of characters in itself. Uh, one of those characters was Stan Belka. We're sitting next to each other one day and I had remembered that he told us about a fence that he made in his yard. Um, and he went to the CAC to learn some welding so that he could build it. So I asked him, Stan, you built a fence once, right? Well, my name's Stan Balka, and um, I guess I was the catalyst of several people's ideas, uh, bringing the art museum, the art association, and the uh, college all together to push the project. He approached me about the project about six months before we started it. He wanted to make a simple fence. Yeah, stripped the truth a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I said, yeah, let's do it. Because I was teaching at the college at the time and I had a bunch of students. There was some sort of a gathering at the museum when I first met Jeanette. And Jeanette was sitting in the chair. She said, are you the, the, the welding guy? And I, I said, well, I do some welding. She said, you're the guy, you're the guy I want to talk to. And I'm thinking like, well, okay, I don't know who you are. She said, I'm Jeanette Rhodes. Now I've got $10,000 and I want to build a fence around this museum, but I want it to be a showstopper. I just kind of wanted to see what I could dream up if I put my mind to it. And so I went on my computer and I was thinking about, so I was like, okay, well, let, let's see what, what things pop up with like fence designs or you know, designs of the sun in them. And I happened to like wander into some stained glass designs. And one of them had um, these circles in it with like little rectangles around the outsides of the circle. And then it had these um, beams coming out of the circle in kind of a spiral pattern and they had different thicknesses of line. So I started sketching, sketching some things out that were similar to that design. And then, you know, they kind of got more and more generalized over time. And I settled on a, one specific panel of the fence that could be rotated and flipped so that all of the panels would look a little bit different. And it would also cause a little bit of like a rolling rhythm on the fence. Um, I pulled out that drawing, I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. So I put it on AutoCAD, I drew it up, we started cutting it from there. There were 30, 3,500 pieces we had to cut to make that. I cut them and grind them and sand them and a lot of angles. And it went from 2 to 74 degrees. Rounded circles are made out of four pieces. They welded together. Four. And in all my years of raw iron, I've made an awful lot of very fancy, delicate pieces of, of wrought iron work. And to be perfectly honest, this was the most difficult piece. I was, I was fully expecting Stan to come back with my design and say, could you modify it in some way? And I was totally ready for that conversation. I think then um, when they approved those designs and they got the steel, they cut all the pieces for the steel to fit that design. So at that point, there was no going back. The college was wonderful about letting us use all the equipment 
and all the supplies, the, the welding wire and the gas and uh, the consumables, a lot of that they paid for. Originally, I was supposed to have a lot of help through the college, but uh, sort of dried up really quickly. There were 85 welders there, so I figured I'd get like 15 of them. Uh, even threw out extra credit. I had four or five that stuck with it, and surprisingly, they were all women, which is odd. But he was a character, Liberty Milligan. She was one of the women welders. Uh, Maggie Wilson was another. I can remember, you know, the very first one that was completed. The first panel. The first panel. Uh, two, you know, and then suddenly, oh, we suddenly had five or six or seven panels. Jeanette never really got to see the final product. She came out, saw what the panels looked like, but never got to see the fence. With all of our fundraising and then the GoFundMe campaign, we raised enough money to, to paint the building, we raised enough money to do up the, the yard and get the gravel, and we had tons of volunteers come to help out with those projects as well. It was really amazing to see so many Art Association members coming together to work on something like that. And it was fun to spend time with those people and start telling jokes together and you start you know laughing laughing together and and doing something productive together we made friendships because we work side by side people and we would never have gotten to know them by bringing our art in and hanging it at a show but we got sweaty together The college decided they didn't want to be part of this anymore and I had to pick up and move. That was a yes. challenge. The biggest challenge for me and him was where are we going to build the rest of this at? I called my wife up and I said, hey, do you mind if I take on a project? She goes, no, I don't mind, but you know, we can't pay for the power for everybody. And I'm like, all right, we'll figure something out. So. We did, we moved it here and in uh, about five hours we had everything here and well, we just started back together. I'll, I'll keep going. The installation was labor-intensive. It, it, took, it took a lot of concrete, a lot of holes, a lot of people. It was a dog and pony show, so to speak, and I was the pony. <laughs> um, one welder and three guys setting panels, so I was always hurrying up, hurrying up, hurrying up. When it started to go up, interest really started peaking. The piece itself is, is very dramatic and is exceptionally nice around the art museum. Um, the part of the fence that is the most dramatic probably is the combination of the stained glass with the wrought iron. And it was the fitment of the circles that created a part of the spiral pattern, but it was the fitting of the glass and the glass work that really sets the fence off. They're all different. A lot of it was to do with old glass I had, glass that isn't made anymore. Some of the spectrum baroques and stuff aren't made, are not going to be made. Everything has to be cut correctly, period. If you're off a sixteenth, eighteenth of an inch, it'll never go together correctly. 